All right, the last topic in this chapter is multiplying and dividing rational expressions. Um, this is really just glorified simplifying. It's just uh, simplifying with an extra fraction. Um, so instead of just simplifying one fraction, I'm simplifying two. Uh, the only thing you really have to remember here is step number two. If there's a division sign, you have to flip the second fraction and change the sign to multiplication. If this sign right here is starting out as a, a multiplication sign, you can just skip step number two. Um, in this case, I have a division sign, so I'm going to go ahead and do step number two. Now, if there's loners, like in this case, I have, I have loners everywhere, um, numerators and denominators of each fraction. I can actually do kind of a combination of step one, two, and three all together. Now, if you're dealing with groups, you probably want to do step one and two together and then do step three next. Um, but since I'm dealing with loners here, I'm going to kind of do all three of the, of the steps together, um, the first three steps together. Okay, so before I do anything, since it's division, I do want to flip it. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this flipped. So I have 8x eight, eight squared y over 15a squared b times, now I'm going to flip this fraction, okay? So I have 5ab to the fourth all over 2xy squared. Okay, so since it's loners, I'm going to combine steps 1, 2, and 3. Um, so step number 3 um, is cancel out all loners and groups. So um, I'm going to kind of treat this, I'm going to kind of combine this to these fractions together to start, okay? So um, I have 8 times 5, that's 40, okay? So I have 40, and then I have x squared, y, a, b to the fourth, okay? So really what I'm doing here is since I'm multiplying fractions, I can just make it one big fraction. Um, and I'm going to do that on the bottom as well. So I have 30, 15 times 2 is 30. a squared, b, x, y squared. Okay, I'm going to kind of throw all the variables there at the end, get my coefficients in the front, throw all the variables at the end. And now I just have a simplifying problem. All right, so I'm going to take that, and I'm going to do step number three, which is simplify um, all loners and groups. Okay, so I have... Um, 40 x squared y a b to the fourth all over 30 um, a squared b x y squared. I'm just rewriting what I had before. All right, so now I'm going to simplify 40 over 30. That simplifies down to 4 thirds. Now I go ahead and look for the variables where they're at. So I have x squared on top, x on the bottom. So I have two x's on top, one on the bottom. So um, I have an extra x on top, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. My y, I have a one y on top, two y's on the bottom, so I have an extra y on the bottom, so I'm going to throw the y down there. I have a one a on top, two on the bottom, so I have an extra a on the bottom. Um, and then I have the b's, so I have four b's on top, one b on the bottom, so I have three extra b's up top, so I can go ahead and, and do that, like that. Um, b to the third, and I can kind of clean it up if I, if I can. In this case, it was all loners, so there's not really a whole lot of cleaning up I need to do. So it looks like uh, that is going to be my final answer. A lot of you probably know what this is. This is the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. I've actually been where this picture is taken from. This is not one of my pictures, but um, it is really beautiful, and you can see San Francisco there on the other side of the, of the water. All right, so I'm going to multiply these rational expressions together. I can see that I have a combination here of loners and groups. Since I have groups, though, I'm going to kind of follow the, um, the instructions as I gave them to you in the notes. I'm going to start by factoring everything. Now, I can look ahead and see if I do need to flip the second fraction, change sign multiplication. In this case, I don't because I'm already dealing with multiplication. So I don't do step two here. So I'm just going to go ahead and factor everything. So I have um, difference two squares there. Uh, up on top of the first denominator or first fraction, and on the bottom, it looks like all I can do there is GCF. There's a two in common, and if I divide both of those by two, I have x plus four left uh, times 
and I'm just going to leave that as 4x. And on the bottom, it looks like I have some slide and divide. Uh, I have a 1 as a leading coefficient, so I don't have to do the 1 times 4. I can just go ahead and, and find the factors of 4. So that's uh, 2 and 2, or 1 and 4. And it looks like I'm going to do 1 and 4, because I need to add them to a, or subtract to a negative 3. So x, x, 4, and 1. Looks like negative 4, positive 1. Since I'm dealing in multiplication here, I can just make this one big fraction. Anything on top can cancel with anything on the bottom. It does not matter what fraction it started in. All right, so I have an x plus 4, x plus 4. x minus 4, x minus 4. Those groups can go. And it looks like the only thing I have left here is a 4 and a 2. And those simplify. Those are loners that can simplify. 4 over 2 is 2. So it looks like I have 2 left on top with an x. And the only thing I have left on the bottom is an x plus 1. And that's my final answer. Okay, so here I'm dealing with two fractions that have a division sign between them. So uh, I'm dealing in all groups here. So I'm going to kind of combine steps one and two. So I'm going to factor everything, and I'm going to kind of flip at the same time. So I started with that first numerator, and it looks like I'm going to do slide and divide. So I'm looking for factors of eight because the leading coefficient is a one. So that's four and two, or one and eight. And it looks like I'm going to do uh, four and two. And I need a positive 2, so I'm going to go positive 4, negative 2, because I add and subtract to uh, get a positive 2. So on the bottom, it looks like everything's a plus sign. Uh, so my only combination there is 3 and 1. So x and 3, x and 1. Since everything's plus, I know all these factors are going to be a plus. Now it's division, so I'm going to change the sign to multiplication, and I'm going to flip the second fraction. So I can kind of factor and flip at the same time. So I'm going to put the 3x plus 3 up top, but I'm going to factor it as I put it on top. So it looks like I can do GCF. So I have a 3 that's in common. And if I divide both those terms by 3, 3x over 3 is just x. 3 over 3 is 1. And then it looks like the x minus 2 is just going to roll down to the bottom. I can't factor that. All right, step number 3, cancel out all loners and groups. Remember, everything on top, anything on top can cancel with anything on the bottom. doesn't matter where it started. So I can go uh, x minus 2, x minus 2. Uh, x plus 1, x plus 1, and it appears that's all I can do. So I have a 3 and an x plus 4 left on top. Remember, we always put the loners in the front so we don't lose them. And an x plus 3. Now I cannot cancel 3 and the 3 on the bottom because the 3 on the bottom is part of a group and I can't cancel out parts of groups. Remember, it's all or nothing. And there's my cleaned up answer. Okay, I have a combination here of loners and groups. But I also noticed that I have a multiplication sign in the middle, so I'm not going to have to flip that second fraction. So I'm going to start by factoring um, my groups here. So let's start with the top of the first fraction. So it looks like I have a combination 3 and 2, or 6 and 1. And it actually works out that I can add and subtract 3 and 2 and 6 and 1 to get a negative 5. But it's this sign right here that's the key. I have to, when I multiply those two numbers together, I have to be able to get a positive 6. So in order to do that, I have to use a negative 3 and a negative 2. Negative 3 times negative 2 is a positive 6. Because you could have said, well, how about, can I use negative 6 and positive 1? And you can add and subtract those to get a negative 5, but the problem is you can't multiply them to get a positive 6. So you can't do that. So I have to stick with the 3 and 2. All right, on the bottom, I have y cubed. Don't have to flip here. So I have 4y squared on top. And then let's go ahead and do the bottom of the second fraction. So I have 5 and 2, or 10 and 1. And um, looks like I'm going to use 5 and 2. So I'm not going to use 10 and 1. So x plus 5, x minus 2, because I need a positive 3 when I add and subtract them. All right, so now I can make one big fraction. Anything on top can cancel anything on the bottom. X minus twos go. Um, I have some loners here. So I have y squared on top, y cubed on the bottom. So I have an extra y on the bottom. So um, I'm going to end up with, and that's everything I can do. So I have 4 and an x minus 3 up top. There's my extra y. Um, and then I have an x plus 5 left on the bottom. So um, I just cleaned it up. It looks like that's my final answer. I cannot cross anything else out. And there we go.